Gamers, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James alongside Alex, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing. Uh assembly, if you will, but a basic overall overview of one of the new Toro tanks recently uh, available at MotionRC.com and MotionRC.eu, and this is the Sturmtiger, uh German tank uh, that fired heavy mortar rounds. Um, it was an oddball uh, when it was produced. It barely served. I think about 18 of them were ever produced, uh, only for about one year. They came really late in the war, but uh, they definitely served and they are definitely cool. I like the oddball kind of stuff, um, whether it's tanks, cars, planes, whatever it is, I always prefer uh, those models that just aren't, you know, the norm, if you will, and this certainly wasn't. So the history of the Sturmtiger, as I said, um, it fired a 380 millimeter uh, rocket propelled mortar, and it was designed as a heavy assault uh, infantry, you know, helper, if you will, and it was designed to basically penetrate uh, thick concrete and you know just destroy buildings with one shot and doing some research I actually found that I guess when they were doing that they actually hit a group of stationary Sherman tanks once and disabled the entire group um, of tanks in one in one go so it was a gigantic uh, you know a gigantic tank that was built on a Tiger 1 chassis that's why that's where the Tiger comes from in the name and uh, they just decided like so many things the Germans did uh, it came late in the war luckily for everybody else it didn't come earlier because it probably would have done a lot more damage um, had it been produced a little earlier but taking a look at it she's 1 16th scale and the first thing that I did um, let's go to the unboxing actually so the uh, the beauty of these boxes and I love the Toros for this is this wood crate something about the wood crate as I you know when you take that out of the cardboard box it gives it such a just aura about it that oh my goodness like I don't even want to dispose of the crate itself I love it but when you open the top of the crate you'll see everything's packed in foam so nothing's gonna get damaged inside of the uh, you know of the box and as you pull it out, you're going to see that we get all your little accessory bits. So you got a box that's going to house a lot of your little accessories that go on the tank. Uh, you're going to have extra track links just in case you need them. You got an infrared battle system in this model. Obviously, you're going to have your manuals, one for the transmitter and one for the tank itself. You got a decal set. You're going to get your battery, which is a 2000 milliamp nickel metal hydride pack and a charger for it, which is great. Obviously, you're going to get your transmitter, too, which you're going to need six AA batteries to, uh, to get going. That's the only extra addition, if you will, for this ready-to-run tank. You're going to get your tanker, uh, you know, your tanker man who's painted up nice, which is great. You're going to get your smoke oil because this tank does have a smoking feature. So uh, you're going to have that as well. So that'll do it for the unboxing. That's basically everything out of the box. Now, coming back here to the table live, I'll just show you some of the things that I did add to it. So um, that comes out of the box. So obviously you have your crane because in real life, and uh, we found a picture of it, but that's how they would load uh, these gigantic 380 millimeter mortar rounds. They would have a hand cranked uh, crane that would lift it up drop it in and I think it was a five tank crew that would uh that would do this some of the other things they do give you two of these cables these are the only things that aren't painted I'd probably end up painting these black but uh you know they're accessories and I saw one picture where it was done up like that so I did it and then uh two of the they give you two of the track links I just added them to the side they sort of can just rest there if you will and that's pretty much it and then the mud flaps so these are flaps on the back and they just sort of snap in they're plastic that uh, will just snap under these two little hooks. Uh, and that's really it for the assembly. Again, when you take the tank out, you know, it comes out ready to go. So uh, it's hard to, to show you, but you know, here, but the weight of this thing, it is significant because it comes with all metal tracks and all metal road wheels. So all of this is all metal down here, the entire chassis, which is awesome and a step up from uh, some of the other tanks uh, we have out there. And when you look really close to one of the things you're going to notice, especially on this model, I haven't seen others yet, um, but I'm assuming it's going to be similar. This obviously is hand painted. Um, you're looking at it and you could see the brush strokes like there's no way a machine or a mold was able to, you know, to do this, if you will. So you could see somebody spent the time to go through it, which adds to the entire level of 
model you're receiving when you get this. I mean, this is a significant uh, model and absolutely awesome. So now getting access inside where you're gonna put your battery, unlike some other tanks do have hatches underneath, but this, as you can see, nothing. So uh, the beauty about this, it'll probably be a lot better off uh, being rugged outside because nothing, at least from underneath, is gonna get inside um, the model and mess up your electronics. So the way you get access to this uh, Toro and many of the Toros, everyone's a little different, but we'll show you underneath this flap when you lift this up, there's a little latch here. Okay, if you can see it on camera, you're gonna push this off to the left, and what that does, and you're gonna lift from the back, and then the front just slips out. There's a little lip on the front, and don't rip it up. Obviously, everything is attached, a lot of wiring up there, so you wanna be nice and uh, just careful with it. You can rest it off to the side, and then we could take a look inside at everything going on in here. So, uh, obviously you got your fan, it looks like your control unit, that's where everything's plugged in and there's some open spaces if you're going to use the extra servo cables, if you wanted to make any additions, like lights, volume, there are all sorts of options in there which the manual goes over. You have your smoker unit in the back and it has a little uh, cap on top, so the way you would load this, take the, take the little rubber stopper out, then you would uh, open this and you drop, I would say about five drops. Start. A little goes a long way with the smoker. You don't want to flood the system. Uh, it could break it, could damage it. So I'd drop about five, six drops in there and uh, start with that, see how it works. You could always add more, but it's hard to remove. So little goes a long way. Got your big speaker box, and as you're going to hear in a second when I turn it on, you won't be able to hear me talk. It, it is loud, which is, which is also awesome. You can see in here all the gears and the drive shaft, they're all metal which is great, hard for me to you know, show you, but you got two motors running each of the, um, of the road wheels. And then all inside, the, the best part about this tank, again, because this tank doesn't have a rotating turret, uh, the Shum Taiga, but this one, um, the, the barrel, this can move uh, in all direction, can go up and down, it can pan and tilt, if you will, and uh, that's how you know, that whole mechanism will work, and you see it on the inside. And then your battery, you just plug it in, it can live in there because there is an on-off switch which is easily accessible when the, uh, you know, when the tank top is on. So you're just going to turn it on and off when you're ready to go. And that's pretty much it for, uh, you know, for the interior of this version of the Toro. I do have a Tiger one as well, so you're going to stay tuned for that video. Which I'm actually excited about because same chassis on the, the Stum Tiger, Stum Tiger as the, uh, as the uh, Tiger one had. So they should, it'll be nice to contrast them back and forth. So now putting on the hatch, again, you can see here there's a little lip. So you press the front in, make sure it fits that way. And then just check, make sure no wires are hanging out. And then when you come to the back, you can just press it down. And then you see if it doesn't line up, you just do a little manipulation and it'll fit in there because it is a perfectly tight fit. There you go, and you hear it lock, and then it's locked. And that's it, and that's how you access everything inside. Now, uh, if you, when you want to turn it on, this hatch opens up. You can see our on and off switch is right inside, which is nice. And then, on top, when you want to use the IR sensor, so if you want to play, you know, infrared tank tag, if you will, you take this off and you'll see on top there's just some servos and it fits and it only fits one way. There's a thick nub and a thin nub. So just line it up the way it's supposed to be and press it in and that's it. And then you could play tank battles and they will record hits and kills and shut off a tank uh, when it's been hit too many times, if you will. But then that's something that you can remove if you want and then your, your tanker guy can go, you know, can sit in there or you could put them somewhere else. With this one, wouldn't go, but let's, uh, I say let's plug it in. We'll show you it on the table, and then we'll take this bad boy outside. So, first things first, transmitter on. Again, I got six AA batteries inside. And uh, then I'm gonna go to the back of the tank, turn it on. And now you're gonna hear, when I flick the switch, it's gonna get loud in here. So, uh, let me move some of this out of the way. We go. So when you want to turn it on, flick that switch. Oh, 
like I said, it gets loud. But now watch how quick it goes. Oh. But it can drive slow. in either direction you hold. And then when you want it, you want it to pan up, you gotta pull down, and it's gonna go up and down on its own. And then when you wanna fire, on this one, you push up. And let me, uh, let me turn it towards the camera. Ready, three, two, push up and down. shuts down but uh, I say that does it for us in here uh, inside the studio so let's take it out drive it around
there you have it guys that's basically it the tank driving around i was just driving around the property and uh she's fun she definitely has some speed on her which i was surprised at she's faster than some of the henlong tanks that i had driven but she could definitely drive nice and uh, slow. I can't wait to get another one and try out the IR sensor. I didn't get a chance to do that on this video. And then what's awesome about tanks, guys, if you guys have a 3D printer, go to Thingiverse. I did this this morning. I, uh, you know, after seeing the picture of what the round would have looked like, I measured the, uh, this hole. It's 23 millimeters, found a 75 millimeter artillery shell on Thingiverse, and I print 3D printed it quick and, uh, painted it, but it would basically sit there like that. That's how they would load it up, uh, as you saw in the pictures, and then get them into the, uh, into the shell. So that's an idea. It's not perfect, but hey, it's gonna look good for, uh, for what we need it for. But overall, the Stummtiger is amazing. I find it, this is my favorite tank so far. Just everything from the paint scheme to the all metal tracks. Um, the sound is great. I love the function, the light of the, uh, of the gun and everything. Um, overall, I'm impressed with it and I'm excited because we got another one here, uh, the Tiger one that we'll eventually do a video on as soon as possible. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see that one as well. So if you have any questions on this Toro tank or any of them, I'll try my best to answer it in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, you may see a tank appear on the wheel which isn't on set right now, but uh, the sub spin and win competition that is going on every Friday. If you watch our live show, we're giving away all sorts of prizes and I'm sure some tanks will end up being on that wheel at some point. So guys, that'll do it for James, Alex behind the camera. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time at Motion RC.